Good morning, and welcome to Round 9 coverage of Grand Prix Richmond. The format is standard. The competitors are Max Margolis with Steel Leaf Stompy at 7-1 and, and Andrew Beckstrom at 7-1, also playing Steel Leaf Stompy. These decks are very similar, but maybe a couple of uh, minor differences here and there. Yeah, and, and there's actually quite a bit of innovation. Um, so, so typically the Steel Leaf Stompy deck, it, it's a mono green base. Uh, just because the main aspect of the deck is trying to use land or else to power out a turn two, five four creature that also has a tiny bit of, a, of an evasive clause in it. That's why you're playing that deck, and that's why it's called Steel Leaf Stomping. That said, what's been popular these days is adding blue. Uh, while the black would have given duress and some removal, uh, the blue act giving you access n to negate post board makes your control matchups much better, and that's the direction it went. But yeah, just going for it's no land or elf compared to botanical sanctum. Oh, okay. So we got we got a fairish game where both players don't have the best card in their deck to start off in land or else. Yeah, you saw Andrew Beckstrom uh, play that Botanical Sanctum and then sort of f f flick in a uh, Green Belt Rampager, gets a little energy, and then but can't keep it on the battlefield, and it returns to his hand. Uh, speaking of energy, there is Servant of the Conduit from Max Margolis. And uh, I guess possibly, you know, they might not realize what they're each up against. They could be playing some sort of green-black, you know, energy deck at this point, but I think they probably have a pretty good suspicion what kind of... Uh, <laughs> there's a Servant of the Conduit. I, 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 think they, I think they got that they're in a mirror match, but I don't think that Andrew is expecting one of Max's surprising tech choices in Cartouche of Knowledge. Vine Mare and Cartouche of Knowledge is build your own flying nightmare. Oh, wow. If you want to recall to an alpha card right, alpha card right there. Well, there is the Steel Leaf Champion. Very powerful card, but here the missed land drop for Max. Yeah, no third land. Yeah. And, and I mean, we're playing Servant and Lanor Elf for a reason. Those de these decks aren't quite mana hungry. They just want to develop as quickly. So missing a land drop early is key. Not because you can't deploy your spells. They will eventually come in. But it's just that you're doing so at a slower pace and giving your opponent the chance to come back. And that is a danger. Man, has anyone animated a Steel Leaf Champion? That card is... Really, like, very dynamic looking. Well, there's a Vine Mare from Andrew Beckstrom. 5-3, Hexproof, and uh, we have a race. Yeah. It, it, it is worth noting that Vine Mare from Andrew will not actually be that good a card in the matchup. It's a f it is essentially a 5 free for 4 because there's not too much interaction these decks that these decks have. And this is an interesting attack, by the way. Wow. Uh, Andrew, Andrew probably suspects a Blossoming Defense. Um, here on the um, Servant of the Conduit, but may decide to take it since uh, going for Servant plus Lost Me Defense might be worth it, but here decides not to. Again, Vine Mare, not that great from Andrew's side just because it's a 5 free for 4. It's okay, but it doesn't have much else. Um, okay, we can see the block here, the Blossom in the Fence, and kind of a 2 for 1 in Andrew's favor. And, and Andrew recognizes that the, the Vine Mare is not so good on it. On his side, Max's Vine Mares are going to be a lot more powerful simply because Cartouche of Knowledge can come down on them, and a 6 4 flyer for the Steel Leaf Stumpy deck might be, is probably lights out. Thorn Lieutenant was the follow up play for Max Margolis after, as you said, two for wanting himself there to get rid of the Vine Mare, but again, a card he's not going to be able to deal with any other way other than in combat. Right. But I mean, this is what these green mirrors are a lot about combat. Um, be, be, in, in a weird way, um, you could argue they don't really want to interact with their opponent's board, but the way they interact is through combat, and essentially, we're going to actually see a lot of interaction. One of the very few, though, direct interaction pieces is, is that Commit to Memory. Both wow. players having a few copies of that card. So yeah, Commit to Memory tucks the Steel Leaf uh, Champion two cards down. But here's Rishkar, yeah. Pima Renegade, coming out of the Steel Leaf Stompy deck. This is not a card that Andrew Beckstrom has in his list, is it? No, and it's a not a very common inclusion, but it's really perfect for Max here. Max was missing land drops. Andrew putting that Steel Leaf Champion on top meant that Max would not have access to too much mana. And, and the Rishkar allows to both put pressure here, plus potentially add mana if Max had to, wanted to develop further. So th th that Rishkar was really a power play on this turn. Uh, and uh, Andrew Beckstrom is below on life and really needs to start developing a board and catch up. Now, commit unlikely will ever see memory in these uh, in these matchups. This is really just there as a as a bounce spell, or do you you see situations where you might say, okay, let's both draw seven new cards? 
Yeah, you still do. These decks still do want to use the memory side, but not in the mirror match. Your opponent having access to these <laughs> cards first is extremely dangerous. There's uh, a heart of Kieran, by the way, for Andrew yeah. Beckstrom. And here comes the Steel Leaf champion that was foretold. <laughs> Interestingly, uh, for some of these tech choices like Cartouche of Knowledge and Rishkar, Max is not playing Heart of Kieran, which is a staple normally of these uh, green Stompy decks. Simply because it's such an efficient card. Oh, wow, that's uh, yeah. the second commit Se memory. <laughs> second copy of commit memory. If you were wondering what Andrew, you know, didn't seem to have a lot going on, that's probably, he's, he was uh, flooded with split cards. Yeah, and, and it's not that great in this matchup, simply because, um, and you see Andrew using it when Max is tapped out because he wants to play around a potential other copy of Blossoming Defense. Really neat interaction here. Uh, Green Bell Rampager, although it will return to hand, does come into play. So if it would return, you can tap it to Crew Heart of Kieran first. And this is what happens. Andrew taps it to Crew Heart of Kieran. Probably will replay it now. And it, can, and it worked as an attacker and a blocker. Right. <laughs> well, uh, again, you can kind of see why Llanowar Elves is the best card, but also not that great at a lot of spots. And, and it is all about having that mana in the early game. The decks don't really have plays to when they're a little flooded on mana. Foreign Lieutenant from Max is, uh, or Memory are kind of where it goes. So you really need that Llanowar Elf to push um, your mana curve as fast as possible, but it's not. Uh, right, and the, and the cost to playing that card in your deck is that sometimes you draw it on turn seven or eight. Right. It, it, can, <laughs> it can be like a, chump, a land against some life. Yeah. One of the uh, original magic Ooh. cards. That is a choice piece of art. And we see another Thorn Lieutenant come down for Max Margolis. Yeah. Thorn Lieutenant is a way to use up this mana. Um, so essentially, with Rish access to Rishkar uh, and Servant of the Conduit and Four Lands, Max will have things to do with the mana. And with uh, Andrew at six, might start pushing through these defenses. At this point, uh, we're going to see one of the more core tenets of Magic, which is that it's usually easier to be on defense than on offense. Just because you can select how you block and, uh, you know, make double blocks that are profitable in your favor. And it's about how Max can push through that and eventually win the game. Since Max is a little favored right now. <coughs> and, and if you're wondering where Max is favored, it, it really comes from these foreign lieutenants. Yeah. Uh, has the mana to activate them, can push through. Um, it, it, the stat of 6-7 doesn't align well with Rampager plus Heart, since you can crew with Llanowar Elves and Servant on the Heart. But a key blossoming defense would be Lights Out. Well, again, Max can also choose which Thorn Lieutenant to pump. He's <laughs> yeah. pretty happy to get one of them through. Right, that, and that's the other line. You can attack with both, force your opponent to make blocks that they don't want to, and then boost one. Um, so say if Green Bell, Rampager, and Heart of Kieran blocked one of you, uh, say Green Bell blocked the two free and Heart blocks the free four, you do trade for one and you force Max to commit mana. Wow, but look at this. We're going to draw seven new cards. I think this is correct. Both players were pretty low on resources, but Andrew is behind on the board and needs to make something happen. That something is probably not going to be good enough since Max has access to these cards first, but it's better to try to go for a Hail Mary and you know, try to salvage a game where you're far behind and have no chance in it. So the plane's going down, he grabbed a backpack and he hoped it had a parachute <laughs> in it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that, that is probably the most perfect analogy. Except the other person knows there's a parachute. <laughs> I think one of the most impressive videos I've ever seen in my life was... Uh, a, uh, uh, a jump without a parachute that was planned and they had like a net they, they had plenty of people to check, and then he just ju jumped without a parachute and got caught, which, it, I mean, wow. <laughs> Cam Mulligan here. <laughs> no, 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 this is it. <laughs> this, this is, is a seven. This is, mm, I don't know. I don't like these seven, shall we run back? <laughs> Obviously, right. memory recall to Time Twister, one yep. of the original most powerful cards in the history of Magic. And, uh, uh, by the way, worth mentioning, a cartouche of knowledge would be huge here for uh, Max Margolis, although the... Heart of Kieran could still get in the way of something. Yeah. and Wow. And Andrew realizing, I can't really win this game staying back, so I'm going to just push with Heart of Kieran, probably chump block with Lionel Ralph down the line. I mean, that was an ambitious attack, but maybe the only one that, the, the one that Andrew had to make. 
Andrew probably did not draw a copy of Llanowar Elf since this would have been an easy play by um, tapping the Llanowar Elf 4-1. Well, there's Cartouche of Knowledge. It's going to go on the bigger Thorn Lieutenant. Yeah, and this is just a disaster for um, for Andrew here. Um, unfortunately, uh, he I mean, he can crew the Heart of Kirin, but by doing so... Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, you can crew the Heart of Kirin and probably trade for this Rishkar at least. It's still not a good spot. Yeah, he's attacking with everybody here. This might be lethal. Um, if you block the foreign lieutenant, which is the biggest <laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Beckstrom says, okay, okay, let's play again. My my knapsack was filled with green decks. <laughs> was, there was no silk in there for me. Let's move on to game two. Yeah. And, and to kind of explain, while this is a mirror match and you may be thinking, well, you know, how, how do I actually gain an edge in the mirror? Um... Well, one of the things that Andrew has that Max doesn't is that Heart of Kieran. While their heart wasn't quite enough, it is a really good card in the mirror match just because it flies over. It's so cheap, it's so efficient, it's so powerful, and there's not many ways for the green deck to deal with it. So we're probably going to see Max board in those two copies of Frashing Brontodon just because it's an efficient free four creature that can deal with Heart of Kieran. So it, it kind of doubles on two fronts and is worth putting in over some of the more marginal cards. Fine Mare probably coming out, even though uh, Cartouche or Knowledge wouldn't. Uh, Supreme Will may come in, but I don't think so. I think you're better off tapping out. Um, there's not much in Max's that will come in. Probably just the two Frashing brought it on and the two Aphrosphere Harvester. Harvester allowing you to do a race, block very efficiently. Uh, a lot of the creatures in the Steel Leaf Stompy deck. Um, not the, f you know, Steel Leaf itself. But it does um, stop a lot of chip damage, allows you to win races. And, uh, and if you ever get it with Rishkar, then it starts blocking Steel Leaf Champion very well. Andrew Beckstrom's side, free for fear Harvester, probably coming in as well. Flyer's key in a matchup like this, so Cartouche of Knowledge from Max is going to be also critical there. Um, one of the more, and you also have two Frashing Brontodon, which Beck Andrew may bring in. They're again efficient creatures, and Andrew doesn't know that Max doesn't have heart, so wants to respect it for the same reason that Max does. Uh, but, you know, also has seen Cartouche of Knowledge and may need to do that horrible exchange. The card I'm the most excited about and I don't know if we can get this one on screen, is Metamorphic Alteration. <laughs> An M19 special. Um, I'm trying... I unfortunately did not get the chance to play that much M19 Limited uh, since I was so focused on Legacy for the Pro Tour. I believe this is a one in a blue enchantment. An enchanted creature is a copy of another creature. So you choose a creature, and then the enchanted creature is a copy of that creature. Yeah, absolutely. Here. It's, uh, yeah, one in the blue, enchant enchantment aura, enchant creature. As metamorphic alteration enters the battlefield, choose a creature. Enchanted creature is a copy of the chosen creature. There you get a look right. at the card. Th and I again, there's only one, but you know what's really good to choose when you're trying to kill your opponent's creature? Walking Ballista. <laughs> walking Ballista is a native 0-0, zero, zero, so if you enchant your opponent's creature and have a walk, and there's a Walking Ballista in play, the creature is probably just gone. This also allows you to, do, to convert a Llanowar Elf in the late game to something a tiny bit more potent. So we're probably going to see Andrew bring this in. There's only one copy, so we may not actually see the card at all, unfortunately. Uh, but if we see it, I think it's going to make for a really interesting moment. Yeah, I, b I believe this card was uh, originally included by Andrew in this list as an answer to Rekindling Phoenix. Right. Rekindling Phoenix, premier card in standard. I would say this is one of the most important mythics in the set and in standard, and it just shapes the format because a lot of the, a lot of the standard is, are these red mirrors, and Rekindling Phoenix is fundamentally one of the best cards. It's just so good. You get to essentially force your opponent into patterns where they're forced to play exile, removal that exiles, or trade two cards for it. It's very hard to deal with that card efficiently, and that's one of the few ways to do so. Otherwise, the green deck kind of has to run into it, and this is why both Max and Andrew are running Rocking Ballista and are at 7-1, because they have to deal with that 0-1 token in some way. If you, do, if you do make Rekindling Phoenix a copy of something else, though, when it dies, you don't get the elemental. So that's the rules interaction you were highlighting. Yeah, yes, element. yeah. <laughs> All right, so these players are uh, shuffled up, or at least uh, Andrew Beckstrom is waiting for Max to finish his uh, riffles here. Of course, Andrew Beckstrom won Grand Prix Providence last year with Martin Yuza and Corey Burkhart. Um, you know, he's got four Grand Prix top eights in his career. Three of them came in team events, and his lone individual top eight came back in 2013, so five years ago. 
Uh, Margolis, on the other hand, is from Maryland. He's been playing forever. Seen him at uh, a million events. Uh, no huge finishes, but he did go on a deep run at U.S. Nationals this year before falling off late in day two. If, you know, you may have seen him on camera before, and that would be why. Sure. Um, another card that we haven't talked about that we're likely to see is Virgil's Gear Hulk. Um, both both players playing three or four copies and a key card in these board board centric matchups. Probably the most important card, I would actually argue, apart from Lano Elf in the early game, is that Verdra's Gear Hulk. Allows a flyer to be gigantic and put a lot of pressure. Yeah, right. Andrew already far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the most perfectly scripted opening he could have. Will he have a turn to Steel Leaf Champion to show off the power of this deck? Lano Elf is very close to Mox Emerald in the early, if you play it on turn one in these decks. Well... Well. Unfortunately, his turn, you know, sometimes you have a deck with elves and birds and you play more elves and birds. This is the mana draw for Andrew Beckstrom. If he has, yeah, and it really depends on the action. If your last action card is something like a commit memory, that would be quite perfect. Um, a card you would keep just because of the interactive potential. We've talked about Verderous Gear Hulk. That would be a card that would be uh, pretty nice to slam here. Oh, Verderous Gear Hulk here would be gigantic. Well, literally. But uh, it would also put Max under a ton of pressure very quickly. I, I, I saw a Ronas in Andrew's hand, not the best fret right now. Um, he, he may play it just, you know, if there's another to deploy with it. And with a lot of mana, actually, Ronas is kind of a good card. You can just fret in the activation and put uh, Max in some difficult blocking situation. <laughs> there you see Andrew just calmly attack with Servant of the Conduit. Doesn't even look up at his opponent as he does it. And yeah. there is Vinemare on turn three. No third land, but that's okay. Lots of Lanor Elves and a Servant of the Conduit to, to chip in here. Literally in the case of the Servant of the Conduit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, the attack with Servant makes a lot of sense here. Max is behind and cannot possibly afford to trade in this spot since Andrew is way ahead on mana. And losing mana is not worth uh, preventing two damage and stopping Andrew's uh, ser and killing Andrew's Servant. All right, another Servant for Max Margolis. That is a Lanor Elves. Yeah. I believe uh, game day promo from Dominaria. There are a lot of additions of Land Oils. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And in comes the Vine Mare. That does not count as chip damage, right? Again, the blossoming is, yeah. defense. The two for one from Max Margolis puts a server to the conduit in the way, uh, plays blossoming defense, and just says, you know what, I, I can't deal with a hexproof creature. I, I mean, it's, it is quite possible to have uh, free power to deal with it. And it's interesting that Max didn't say trade the Lano Elf. Now, from Andrew's side, if Max traded Blossoming Defense plus uh, Servant, I'm thinking that Max ha w has a need for the mana, but isn't deploying something that would deal with Vine Mare efficiently. Meanwhile, or Andrew Beckstrom uh, fortified with another server to the conduit and an Ether Sphere Harvester. And we get a Vine Mare on the other side of the table from Max Margolis. Andrew would love a Verdurous Gear Hulk right here. Again, Thrashing Brontodon, we discussed, um, would be is also really important because both players board in Harvester. But, yeah, one of the nicest feelings... I mean, we're not against a red deck here, but one of the nicest feelings is to animate Harvester and, like, gear hulk it up <laughs> to the max. <laughs> we won't probably see that since it makes sense to diversify your frets on well, the board. A, there's Aronis. Yeah. The Indomitable. And uh, right. in comes an Aethersphere Harvester, and it looks like... Andrew's considering whether or not he wants to lifelink that. Uh, it seems like Andrew will probably lifelink the Harvester since the amount of energy that Andrew has access to is very high. Um, it's interesting that Andrew decides not to go for, say, plus two. Okay, th that makes sense. Um, it was, I thought it was a bit strange that Andrew did not uh, give plus two attack, but if you have a creature to play, then that makes total sense. Yeah, commits a Thrashing Brontodon to the board in case Max should find his own Aethersphere Harvester or Heart or whatever. Right. And, and here Max is uh, in, under a ton of pressure. He, you have to deal with this Harvester, which Vinemare plus Cartouche does do. Um, but Ronas is still a fret, and it's one of the best frets in the Green Mirrors because there's not much that you can do apart from Chump Block. Yeah, Max considering an attack and probably realizing that it's not a race that you can win. Yeah. Doesn't mean you don't run it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. The, the problem here, though, is... I, um, Andrew is very happy with the situation. You get to here in this spot. You get to crew the harvester, attack with Ronas, and then 
pump this harvester to the to the nines and essentially well at least seven power and that uh and that would be pretty powerful uh, in, also in, has like, a hush up oasis down there to, to push through some extra damage yeah but i think you keep the land here and you just use the the ability on the table but yeah here let's see what, what i would like here is something along the lines of crew harvester with Servant of the Conduit to preserve energy. Uh, then we can pump it with our free lands, and then we have Servant, double Anor Elves, and free energy, I believe, up top. So attacking with a 5-5, five, five, plus 7 in the air, uh, you, well, 5 in the air, you could boost it by using an energy from Servant and the two Anor Elves, assume, because, okay, with the extra land, then this is even better. You I, I believe pumping it to 7 is pretty good, keeping just the Servant untapped. And, and obviously the Brontodon. Cruise the Harvester, pumps the Harvester. Yeah, the, the Ronas also rumbles in. Yeah. Yeah, the Brontodon can also rumble in. You're, you're okay with trading Brontodon for Thorn, Thorn Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Although, to be fair, it's nice to have the option to get rid of that Cartouche of Knowledge if needed. So I kind of like... Let's see, this is 12, so I can, I can see attacking with it. Oh, wow, even attacking with the Servant of the Conduit, just to put more pressure. Or not. Yeah, he decides not to attack with the thorn uh, with the Servant. The, the nice part about this, this attack with the Brontodon um, that Andrew is doing is that if Max does decide to double block, Andrew can decide to deal two less damage with the Harvester, just boost the Brontodon up, and trade uh, and just eat up both creatures. Right. See, he's got access to four mana still between the two elves, the servant, and uh, the botanical sanctum. Yeah, and, and here Andrew is in a commanding lead. Between the lifelinking flyer, the Ronas, uh, I'm pretty sure Andrew is just going to clean up in a few, in one or two turns. Maybe one, but probably two. Yeah, and Andrew decides to give Aethersphere Harvester lifelink, also just move the race in opposite directions. Yeah, and, and this is why I was not... I was a bit surprised by the attack yeah. with Vinemare. It didn't feel um, that it would accomplish uh, Max's goals since Max cannot really win a race. So by attacking, Max is roughly not in a position to ever win. Yeah, you see a Nissa Steward of Elements in hand for Max Margolis, but uh, he doesn't have any time to uh, get that pulled together. That and was a... Go yeah. to game three. Yeah, then this is a bit of a surprising inclusion for Max. I mean, it makes sense in the sideboard. It it it, uh, it uh, attacks on a very different angle than a lot of the cards do, and the fact that you can slam it on turn two, start building it up, and getting either card advantage, board presence, or you know going towards the ultimate, <laughs> means that it's a really good threat against these control decks. On the draw in a uh, green mirror, though, it's really about the board. And if you're playing Nissa Steward of Elements, usually what happens is your opponent gets to attack it. I guess you could run Nissa with the viewpoint that it's an 8 mana, 10 damage spell, which is a totally fine viewpoint. Uh, but I believe it's probably not the most uh, optimal card in a mirror like this. Just because your goal is to develop your board, so you really need, you just want creatures. background there you see Martin Yuza over Max Margolis' shoulder, the Hall of Famer. Checking in on Andrew Beckstrom, perhaps. Yeah, Ju I mean, Juza just, uh, well, played standard and came second at the Pro Tour. Alongside uh, Josh Hardy Layden and Ben Stark. We, w we were cheering uh, hard for them, actually. Which is not usual, but we felt that we won But if they won, uh, Kelvin Chu would have made the world championship. So right, yeah, there was, so, there was <laughs> so much in play in that last round, in that finals, right? It would have changed the, the texture of the Pro Tour Team Series. Uh, you know, it would have uh, allowed Channel Fireball to get into that over um, Team Ultimate Guard. Uh, you know, yeah, there, I mean, were, there were all sorts of implications for uh, at-birth slots in the world championship. Yeah, I mean, Reed, Reed who's uh, going to commentate the the rounds with Marshall, you know, uh, so so we'll alternate. Um, probably was also sweating that match, <laughs> but for a very different reason, yeah. and certainly not cheering for <laughs> the same team we were. Since, um, yeah, you're right. If uh, if the team with Juza, Ben Stark, and Josh had won, then they would have pushed out the Peach Garden Oath uh, 
you know, Grand Prix winner <laughs> as Andrew Cunio, <laughs> John Finkel. Oh, really? I mean, yeah, the, it's crazy. I, I, I can't wait. I, I was for that event, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, oh, by the way, uh, Lucas Esper Bertold is live tweeting the preparation for the event <laughs> every day. Does that day. involve him singing Des, uh, Despacito? Despacito? <laughs> so yeah. he can practice his <laughs> Spanish. Right, because the the, t the, the teams, uh, the, the Harayula Latin team does speak two languages in Spanish and Portuguese. And while they do have some similarities, they are not the same language. I mean, I mean the, the, you could have a really funny situation where... The ultimate guard team is like I don't. We don't understand what they're saying, but the, the, their own team doesn't <laughs> <laughs> understand themselves. All right, we got a game three coming up here, though. I believe Luis Salvato also a key part of this of the Harriula Latin team. Yeah, he is, and he's sitting in the feature match area. We may get a chance to see him in action. He's eight zero oh, coming into day two action here at Grand Prix Richmond. Also <laughs> in the feature <laughs> match area, Seth Mainfield, uh, eight zero himself, not playing each other yet. Yeah, Lu Luis Salvato is probably the one with the highest chance to pull something out of this weekend. Oh, absolutely. He's got three of his six Grand Prix slots have one point. So that means that an 11-4 finish uh, is valuable to him. He can go, assuming no one else moves, he can go 11-4 and four at three straight GPs and win Player of the Year. Right, and that's because of some of the incredible Pro Tour results. But yeah, even... Uh I mean, and that would be a bad day. He's 8-0, so that would be free 4 <laughs> He can go for much, much more here. All right. All right, Max Margolis is going to keep his hand, but uh, Andrew Beckstrom's going back for six new cards. I, I, yeah. Maybe looking to give us that turn to Steel Leaf champion that we have not seen yet in this matchup. Yeah. Um, there's a few things. I, while, while we wait for uh, Mulligans to resolve, I, I, like, uh, I like this evolution in the green stompy list. They've gone a bit away from just offloading on the board with whatever I can as quickly as I can. And I really like this Walking Ballista uh, plus Verdris Gearhulk. You know, a key staple of the Winding Constrictor decks and uh, the s of uh, the Blue-Green Gift, uh, Godfarrow's Gift decks. This Walking Ballista plus Verdris Gearhulk synergy is so powerful. And, and they realize we don't need much more work. These cards just do are good in general and together are incredible. So I really like this combination. And Andrew Beckstrom plays free adventurous impulse to kind of smooth his draws and make a combo like that a little more likely. Yeah, card we haven't seen yet in this matchup. So there's Verdra's Gearhawk, Heart of Kieran. All right, he's going to keep this hand. There is the turn one Lanoir Elves for Max Margolis. Okay, we're, okay. We're, at least, we're at least in fair territory here yeah, still. Yeah, matched on both sides of the table. Yeah. Oh, my. One of the worst feelings in the mirror match is when your opponent has access to Lanor Elves and you do not. Especially if you're on the draw. All right. Greenbelt Rampager comes into play twice for Max Margolis. Refuses to stick. Next turn uh, might be a little different. Yeah, and Andrew is probably relatively happy about um, the, that turn development for Max. The worst thing that could have happened to Andrew is, a turn, is having turned to a really powerful and key fret. Yeah, Ronis the Indomitable comes down on turn two for Andrew Backstrom. Yeah. And, and now Max has to consider what to deploy. Um, Max had the option to go for Steel Leaf Champion, but because of Ronas the Indomitable being in front, Andrew can just essentially play any creature with four power, and it makes any attack from Max really difficult. How about not just any creature, but the Steel Leaf Champion himself here on turn three. Still only two lands in play for Andrew, but that Lanomar Elves doing yeoman's work. Right, and here because Max was afraid of, you know, deploying a Steel Leaf Champion in the face of Ronas, what Andrew did was, well, okay, now I can attack because I don't, mu <coughs> with the Steel Leaf Champion, I can block what you're presenting. And, and this puts Andrew in an aggressive seat. Missing the land drop is key. Both players uh, miss their third land drops, and it's possible that Max is missing the fourth. Um, so we'll see how this, how Max can deploy. Uh, Max, Max is still missing no. the third. Yeah, yeah. But, but you have, but he has access to Rishkar, Servant of the Conduit. So while he's missing land drops, he's certainly not going to miss on mana. Um, the Rishkar is really interesting here. Uh, I guess you would want to pump the Green Bell Rampager because it trades with Steel Leaf Champion cleanly. the The question is, what else did you pump? Did you want to pump the Rish card to give yourself the ability to add mana? Did you want the, the Servant of the Conduit? Because the Rish card does have to stay in play to, to help that mana production ability. Right. So he does put the counters on the Servant. 
and on the Rampager. And Andrew's content to just attack with the indestructible creature. Indestructible, death touch, 5-5 five, five for free mana creature. <laughs> yeah. And there's Heart of Kieran, and boy, the advantage meter should be swinging way in Andrew Backstrom's favor here. Right. The, the Ronas, as the Indomitable, keeping that damage up, and Heart of Kieran also evasive damage that would be difficult for Max to deal. Max does have Cartouche of Knowledge in hand, so that can stop the Heart of Kieran. Um, but it's worth noting that with Ronas's ability to give Trample to the Heart, it would trade. Oh, Ronas is great here for Max. Uh, it allows Max to stop the Ronas in front, and eventually that Cartouche of Knowledge that might come out now would allow Max to also stop the Heart of Kieran. All right, he's going to play another Servant instead. I think this is okay. Max can still take a hit for four here um, with the Ronas being able to block. <laughs> Uh, down the line, Max can Cartouche of Knowledge um, one of his creatures. The Ronas would be kind of a funny one, but it's kind of all eggs, in all, all eggs in one basket and would open up Max to a commit memory. I was just going to say, while, while, it, in, um, while it is indestructible, it is not hexproof. Right. Uh, commit memory, um, I'm trying to figure out if, uh, just, just to say like whether you would want it or not, because you don't want to get blown out by Blossoming the Fence with that card ever. That, that is yeah. a horrible tempo exchange, and you will probably lose the game as a result. Sure. Yep. But And the thing is, both players kind of develop their boards pretty strongly. So it's a question of, are you okay with spending four mana just to deal with one permanent when each player is deploying a ton? And yeah, here Andrew deciding to go for maximum damage, crewing with Steel Leaf Champion and uh, pumping with Ronas on the Heart of Kieran. Putting Max at a low life total and trying to eventually push that final damage in. And quite an army that Max has deployed with just two lands. But can he hold back Andrew Backstrom here? I mean, just yeah. two lands, but six mana available potentially. Obviously tapping, actually, yeah, six mana. But but having all these mana creatures tap is not very good when you're trying to develop your board. And here Max has access to Cartouche, so, so the game will progress. It's just a question of what to Cartouche of Knowledge, and I'm kind of in favor of Cartouching the, the Ronas. I know it's all eggs on one basket type of situation, but by going Cartouche of Knowledge onto Ronas, um, you get to block the Heart of Kieran, and the other creatures can get stopped. Um, Green Bell Rampager on Steel Leaf Champion, and uh, Ronas can be chump block since he cannot give it self trample. Which is a really important part to balance that card. No, uh, you know, Ma Max does not feel like he has any options. Um, I, 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 we, we must, I must have misseen the cartouche of knowledge because otherwise, yeah, if, if Max cannot block a flyer, then yeah, that, that would explain that concession. And Andrew Backstrom goes to 8 and 1, looking to add another individual Grand Prix top 8 to his resume. <laughs> so great job there, Andrew Beckstrom uh, in the green-blue mirror. We saw a couple of minor differences between the two decks, but, you know, again, same plan, turn two Steel Leaf champion. Um, yeah. You know, Ronas the Indomitable, and, uh, you know, it played out perfectly for uh, Andrew Beckstrom there in game three. Both, both players were light on land, but he was able to get the bigger threats into play. The, the evasive threats especially. Ronas dealt a ton of damage first in points that Max couldn't chump block. And then the Heart of Kieran kind of pushed the final damage. Yeah. All right. We've got more magic coming up for you. We're going to be turning our attention to the player of the year race. We've got Luis Salvato and Seth Manfield in the feature match area on Time Walk. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these messages.